Dzień dobry Państwu. Zaczniemy trochę z innej beczki o monitoringu. Wszyscy dzisiaj mówią o monitoringu. Jest to nawet, można powiedzieć, modne. Dobrze monitoring mieć. Wiem coś o tym z własnego doświadczenia, bo z niejakim sukcesem monitoring sprzedaje. Dzisiaj, no do, dobrze mieć śmierć monitoring, natomiast dzisiaj przyjechał do nas gość z Łotwy, założyciel i prezes firmy Zabix, lidera w monitoringu open source'owym i powie nam, jak z tego monitoringu wyciągnąć korzyści biznesowe dla korporacji. Ok. Your stage. Uh, well, thank you, thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here at Open Source Days in Poland. Uh, and also very proud to be a, a sponsor of this conference. So today uh, it, it's a little bit of a non-typical talk for me because I'm used to talk about some technical details of Zabbix, technical benefits and technical the functionality of Zabbix. But today I'd like to talk a little bit more high level. Uh, a, a little bit about the values that the monitoring tool or Zabbix may bring to, to your company, to your enterprise. But uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Alexey Vladyshev. I, am, I started my work, I'm creator of Zabbix. I started my work on Zabbix a long time ago in 1997 or 1998. And currently we, Zabbix uh, is being developed by a group of people, by a team. Uh, we, had a, we have a headquarters in Riga, uh, in Latvia, very, not, not so far from, from Poland at all, just one uh, hour flight. Uh, and also we've got a subsidiary companies in Tokyo and uh, in uh, New York. So what is Zabbix? How many of you use Zabbix already? Okay, okay, that's good to know. Um, anyway, Zabbix is a universal uh, open source and enterprise level monitoring solution. And in this definition, uh, all words are very, very important. Just let me uh, give you a little bit of attention to this definition. It's a monitoring solution, so it's basically it's capable of monitoring things. It's capable of monitoring applications, network. Uh, it may uh, analyze uh, log files. It does uh, web monitoring and, and so on and so forth. It does auto discovery, so many, many different things. The main purpose of monitoring tool is, is obviously is detect problems and to notify users about the problem. Uh, it's also uh, a universal, so it's, uh, the use of Zabbix is not limited to IT monitoring, so it's not only about networks, applications, uh, applica uh, some uh, resources like a memory and CPU. Uh, Zabbix can also be used for different uh, uh, types of applications like IoT monitoring or sensors of, uh, or environmental monitoring when we have uh, temperature and humidity sensors and we are collecting data, analyzing data and making some decisions. So it's very universal. It's also open source and some different people have different understanding what is open source. My understanding is that it is free. Yeah, It's free, it's open source. You may go to our website, you download Zabbix and use it, use it for free. Zabbix uh, uses exactly the same license as Linux kernel does. It's, it's released under GPL v2 license. We don't have any closed source or um, uh, non-free versions of Zabbix. Just a single product, you download it, and you take advantages of all functionality of Zabbix. And actually, uh, this is our promise to users and community that Zabbix will stay open source. We are not going to introduce any enterprise versions of Zabbix. Uh, and enterprise, enterprise level means that all enterprise features that we provide, um, uh, you, you, you can use it immediately. An enterprise means that Zabbix as a product can, could be nicely integrated into existing stack of your enterprise technologies. You use MDB systems, you use uh, uh, help desk systems, ticketing system, uh, uh, I don't know, um, asset management systems, whatever, or, or, or monitoring tools of different levels, uh, higher level, uh, lower level monitoring tools. Zabbix could be integrated into existing stack of technologies you use. So um, Zabbix is easy to adopt and it's free. I think these are two, two, two benefits. And actually these are business benefits because it costs nothing to try Zabbix. Again, you download Zabbix, you deploy it, 
you adopt it in your enterprise and uh, you, you, you basically pay nothing. Um, again, uh, there is no license fee associated with Zabbix. It's very different from a closed source alternatives coming from a big vendors when you have to pay a per device fee. You'd like to monitor a server, okay, you need to pay a certain amount per year in order to monitor it, you buy a license. With Zabbix, there, there is no license, it's, it's basically free for monitoring of, uh, of thousands of servers or maybe 100 of thousands of servers. And again, uh, the amount of data, there are no limits on the amount of historical data, no limits on the amount of, of, of devices. So why do enterprises use the monitoring solutions? What's the primary reason? I think the primary reason is that um, enterprises, it's all about, well, basically money. So big companies, they earn money, they use monitoring tools uh, in order to avoid uh, downtimes, to detect problems and try to fix those problems as soon as possible. And enterprises and the building blocks of the enterprises is basically programming languages. We have some enterprise software written in uh, NSC, NSC language like Linux kernel, like uh, most of data database engines written in C language or C++ language. Uh, in enterprise world, uh, it's very often you may find uh, the Java, of course, the stack of uh, the Java technologies, Java or Scala is built on top of JVM, which is a very nice piece of, piece of, te piece of technology. Uh, if, 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 even if you, if you want to develop a very nice applications, you may think, okay, I'm going to develop some things in, in Haskell, and Haskell gives you lots of guarantees about how your code I is executed. It's, it, it has a very nice type safe system, uh, strong, strong typing, uh, higher level, higher order functions, and so on and so forth. But regardless of what technology you use or company uses, there are still runtime problems. Anyway, C programming language, it's too low level, there are memory leaks, unusualized pointers, the program may crash. Even if you use the Java, it's really hard to reason about uh, resource utilization, how much memory I need to run my application, yeah? Uh, there are some problems with the garbage collector which may face uh, performance issues and we need to uh, understand uh, those performance issues and detect those. Even if you use a Haskell, which is very high level, high level of abstraction language, it's really hard to reason about, again, about the resource usage. Uh, it has a lazy, lazy functions and we don't know how much memory they may take to cal calculate. My point is that technologies, uh, they, uh, they do, uh, any technology we use, there are no guarantees. Even if we build high availability clusters, we use a special type of hardware and software, uh, still we have no guarantees. In terms of performance, it's, it's really hard to get guarantees. Resource usage, like a memory usage or a network usage, availability, latency, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, just a quick example from a Confluence uh, knowledge base. Confluence, this is Enterprise Wiki, and users are basically asking, so how much memory I need for, for the Confluence Enterprise Wiki installation? And <coughs> we may think, okay, uh, developers, they know the answer because they wrote this piece of software, but actually what we are getting from developers is the answer uh, like we don't know. We are unable to give a concrete recommendation for the amount of memory to allocate because this depends on many different factors. How do you use it? Do you have maybe images in your enterprise wiki? How many users you have? What kind of hardware you, you use? And so on and so forth. So even developers who develop the piece of software, sometimes they're unable to answer quite, I think, obvious questions. So how much? resources I need to run your piece of software because it depends on so many variables. Um, despite all effort, high availability clusters, uh, use of a better technology, we still face all sorts of uh, issues in, in the runtime, we have a downtimes. And downtimes, that's what companies are afraid of because downtime means service is not uh, operational, it's down, 
we are not providing the service, we cannot charge for the service, the SLA is going down. So that's something we need to avoid by any cost. And this is why we need the monitoring. That's why we, 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 we have to uh, take care of monitoring of our infrastructure on the different levels. So the typical use of a monitoring system is a problem detection. And it's, it's, it's very, very typical, okay? We've got um, lack of free memory and your monitoring system will tell you, okay, there is lack of free memory. Or your application crashed for some reason or high availability cluster, one of the nodes of the high availability cluster goes down and you'll be notified that, okay, it, it is down. But Zabbix goes further and it provides additional tools and techniques to, uh, it tries to predict problems before they actually happen. So Zabbix gives you uh, anomaly detection. Uh, it means that we are trying to detect something abnormal, abnormal situation. We are comparing current system behavior with what was in the past, like today's Wednesday, and we are comparing uh, to, to, uh, to Wednesday one week ago. And if today, for example, we have twice higher CPU load, every CPU load for, for the last hour is twice higher than it was one week ago at exactly the same time, Zabbix will tell you, okay, hey guys, I detected something. Maybe it's not a real problem, but at least it may give you a hint, yeah? Hint to DevOps guys, to, to operations, to have a look and figure out uh, what really happened. Zabbix also has a problem forecasting. That's, that's what we released just recently in Zabbix 3.0 in February this year. We introduced an, uh, a new trigger functions. One is a forecast, so we may try to predict when we hit a certain threshold. If this is a graph of uh, uh, storage use and our threshold is 10%, we'd like to be notified at 10%. We'd like to know when we hit this uh, threshold. Uh, the, 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 this function will tell you exactly after what amount of time we hit this uh, threshold. Okay, so we have more time to be prepared for this potential problem. Also, Zabbix provides uh, a trend prediction. Uh, trend prediction is we'd like to know a metric value after a period of time. We'd, uh, we'd like to know what will be a, a number of transactions per second, for example, uh, after one week or after, <laughs> after one month. In this case, we use a new trigger function which is called time left. So how much time uh, is left? Uh, so in this case, it's uh, uh, maybe four hours. Now, ensuring quality of service. <coughs> That's really, really important. Um, without uh, numbers, without uh, measuring things, uh, without measuring SLA, we have no idea how our IT services works, how our IT department works. Do we provide services on a good level or not? So this is one of, uh, again, uh, a big benefits of using monitoring tools is that finally we may get some numbers to, to understand if you're doing a good progress or maybe a bad progress in terms of uh, maintaining the SLA. And uh, I will give you a, a couple of case studies from, uh, uh, from, from some of our customers. ICON. Um, ICON is a company which, um, do, do you know what is, who knows what is ICON company? ICON, okay. So the ICON is a company which basically um, is responsible for internet infrastructure, for core infrastructure of the internet, like DNS services, uh, secure DNS, QEs, as well as management of top level domains. So what is top level domains? Dot com, dot pl, dot org, those are top level domains. So this, com this company is working closely with registrars, uh, kind of local company maybe in Poland, which registers uh, .pl uh, domains, and they work closely with those companies. And the challenge for ICANN is to make sure that those companies, uh, they provide services on a good level. That, that, that if you register a domain, it will appear in the DNS after no longer than maybe one hour, yeah? And this change will be distributed across all root DNS services. 
and it has to be measured and it has to be uh, this this, uh, this histo history data needs to be collected somehow. Um, and <laughs> ICA used Zabbix to monitor more than 60 uh, 60 uh, thousands of hosts. Yeah, these are different types of devices. Uh, normally, these are Linux <laughs> boxes as well as uh, storages uh, and and uh, network devices. So, if we have a look at the numbers, so what does it mean to monitor uh, 60 thousands of hosts? Uh, it means we are talking about, in case of ICON, two million of metrics, 20 million of triggers. Uh, what is a trigger in Zabbix? If, if you know Zabbix, you know what is trigger. If you don't, trigger is basically a problem condition. Yeah, it's a definition of a problem. So in case of ICON, Zabbix is able to detect 20 million of different problems, basically. Yeah. So it, uh, it's it's about six terabyte of history, and 40 locations uh, distributed across uh, different countries. So the biggest countries are covered now. Uh, by monitoring by Zabbix. And Zabbix performance in this case is about 21 of uh, thousands of checks per second. Some of these checks are aggregated checks. So basically Zabbix is doing even more, even more checks per second. Uh, and what are the business benefits of, of this setup? Why would ICON use Zabbix or maybe use some other monitoring tool? Obviously without monitoring tool, without objective measurements, uh, again, we, d we don't know how we deliver our services. We don't know if our DNS services works or secure DNS is okay or registrars, they work fine or not, if, or SLA is, is okay or not. Yeah, so this is very, very important. And also the, the monitoring for ICON is helping them very much in defining a weak points in the infrastructure. So they uh, after after the Zabbix monitoring was established in ICON, now it's really easy to tell what registrants, uh, registrar companies are doing good job or uh, what uh, what uh, what maybe some of them they are doing a bad job, so they need to be uh, kind of punished somehow. Uh, another case study. This is a very large um, network of retail shops uh, from Russia. It's called Magnet, basically Magnet. Uh, it's uh, more than 11,000 of shops uh, distributed across Russia. Actually, this is approximately the same scale of, as Walmart has in the United States by the number of shops. Walmart has a little bit more of shops comparing to the Magnet. It's one of the largest retail network um, in the world. Um, and uh, before introducing Zabbix, they used uh, many different tools, monitoring tools. And that's actually what happens very often. When a company wants to use Zabbix, they use it as an integra integration platform for maybe other monitoring tools. Sometimes we see 50 monitoring tools already deployed at the customer side because you purchase hardware, and hardware comes with some monitoring tools from a vendor. You purchase application, uh, database, and they come with different monitoring tools, and you end up having maybe tens or 50, or in some cases more than 100 of monitoring tools deployed in one, uh, in one organization. It's, it's really difficult to manage. There is no single point of view of your problems. There is no single dashboard. So, and this is exactly the, ch the challenge uh, the company has. They already had some proprietary tool uh, and tools, I would say, yeah, so many, many different tools, and they wanted to have a consolidated platform, so they choose the Zabbix. Um, and it's very large scale installation, uh, 200 of thousands of hosts. And now let me tell you where this huge number comes from. These are physical hosts. It's not a kind of a, Actually, this is a host having a device having IP address. So, and it's, let's, let's have a look. What does it mean? It's about 5 million of metrics, a little bit less, num less number of triggers because no, all metrics um, uh, contributes to problem uh, definition, 5 terabytes of history, and 11,000 uh, of stores. And we use a proxy. So in Zabbix, in order to have a distributed monitoring, you install a proxy and proxy collects data from shop, from this store, 
from grocery uh, store and sends the data to the central location, uh, to, to the central Zabbix server. Uh, Zabbix performance, uh, I think now it's much more than at uh, 20,000 uh, checks per second. This installation is growing, but it's, it's about approximate number 20,000 of checks uh, per second. So, and how the grocery store looks like normally? Just a rather small grocery uh, um, store. Uh, it has about maybe 20 devices on average. It could be POS, terminals, um, some refrigerators. So you'd like to get the temperature from your refrigerators to make sure that they are working properly. Um, you get some computers, uh, you get uh, network equipment and so on and so forth. So on average, it's about 20 <laughs> devices per one um, store. And how monitoring is done? Again, we install a Zabbix proxy. For each store, there is a Zabbix proxy installed. Pro uh, stores are highly distributed across, across the, the whole country in different cities. Uh, we install a Zabbix proxy. Uh, proxy takes care, the proxy takes care about monitoring of a local network and then proxy sends uh, all data to a uh, central uh, Zabbix server which basically analyzes data, detects problem, does forecasting, uh, trend prediction, and so on and so forth. It's all automated. There is inventory database outside of Zabbix. It's not part of Zabbix, it's, it, it's, 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 it's a separate system. It's inventory database. And as soon as you have a new grocery store, uh, you have some changes in inventory database. And then using Zabbix API, it, it tells Zabbix server that, okay, we've got a new proxy and new data has to be collected from the proxy. So installing monitoring in a new store, it's just, it's, it's fully completely automated. So it's very, very easy to, uh, to work with. So in this case, for this customer, it's rather big customer, it's very big customer. Uh, Zabbix was, the primary benefit of Zabbix is that it was a single point, yeah? This is, it's, it was kind of uh, the center of aggregation of, of all monitoring data. Central dashboard, uh, central notifications, uh, a central way how to automate different things using Zabbix uh, API. So before it was just uh, multiple, multiple vendor solution from from uh, multiple solutions from different vendors, um, more than 50. After Zabbix was deployed, it was just a single monitoring platform which was integrated with existing system like uh, this inventory database. And obviously it has much lower cost of ownership because remember you, you don't pay license fees at all, yeah? It's, 200 of thousands of devices. Imagine if you, if you need to pay a license fees, uh, which normally cost maybe 50 up to 200 US dollars per device per year. It's a huge cost associated with just having a monitoring tool which take, take, takes care of your uh, infrastructure. So there is no, uh, no per device license fee, which is very, very uh, important. Uh, so, Scalability, and I call it universal scalability because Zavis could, can be used to, to monitor at different levels of your IT infrastructure from hardware to, I don't know, network, applications, uh, middleware, uh, virtualization, cloud, uh, and it scales to, to, to very big numbers, yeah? So it scales, from this case studies, you, you, may, you may see it scales to 200 of thousands of hosts. Uh, five million of metrics, 20 thousands of triggers, terabytes of historical data, and 11 thousands of remote, uh, remote locations. Yeah? And each remote location has a number of agents deployed and number of agentless checks performed every, every uh, second. So once again, uh, just a few benefits of Zabbix uh, to summarize. It's again, universal monitoring uh, platform. You may use it for different purposes, not necessarily related to IT services, to IT monitoring. Again, it's true free software. Okay, I don't call Zabbix like open source. I, I call it open source because it's easier to understand. But in many cases, I call Zabbix a free 
f true free software because it's really true true free yeah you 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 use it you use it for free if you need some services from Zabbix company no problem you can purchase the services if you find if you have your own uh, resources you absolutely uh, fine do it uh, on your own uh, we, we we don't mind at all Zabbix is free and open source uh, once again it's really easy to adopt not necessarily Zabbix but any other open source solution or free solution because you you try the solution uh, you understand that it fits your needs very well you have some good benefits of it and then you may decide what to do you may leave it or you may purchase some services from a vendor or or anything else it costs basically nothing yeah except of course uh, the work of your uh, people of your colleagues to, to implement this solution but uh, other than that there are no additional costs associated uh, with with the software no license fees extremely low TCO and no vendor lock-in yeah if someone wants to extend Zabbix they have a choice they, they, uh, they may go directly to us as a vendor as Zabbix and tell okay we would like we would like to introduce some report please do it for us but in the same time they may go to our partner or maybe if they have development resources the company may develop add-ons to Zabbix and and we don't mind as well yeah so there is no vendor locking you may extend Zabbix using your own uh, resources well thank you thank you very much and please come to our booth thank you Thank you, Alexei. Perfect timing. Okay. <laughs> Jeżeli Państwo chcecie się jeszcze dowiedzieć czegoś o Zabixie, zapraszamy na stoisko, a później jesteśmy partnerem. Linux Polska jest partnerem Zabixa, także też zapraszamy do kontaktu po Open Source Day. Dziękuję.